Namaste. You might want to join me the first part of my set practice as I will be doing preparatory techniques for deep back bending and hip openers. In the second part, I'll be sharing with you tips so you can gain an insight here and there, maybe contribute those learnings to your home practice. Yeah. So can we start lying on our tummies? <laughs> yeah. And then this is how I normally begin my self-practice. The Mansya Kridasana are the position of the fluffing fish. And then just relax the head over one side. Let the pelvis broaden and start to breathe mindfully. What I love about this position yeah. More than opening the hips and relaxing the low back, yeah, this position paves way for the opening of the respiratory system. So good feeling the breath, yeah, piercing the internal compartments from the nostrils to the chest down the core and even to the bottom of the hips. Okay, and then folding that extended leg and circle around. And feel free to turn the head the other way if you feel your neck starts to yeah, become heavy. And you can wave that leg to side to side and around in circles. Beautiful. All right. Yep. That arm corresponding, that bent knee opens to the side and then just flipping over that shoulder. And here, shoulder open already. If you low back in the shoulder, feel open, you can kneel both sides and give that opposite shoulder you know, some nice rubbing around the joints. Or you can yeah, link them behind you. And here you can rub the neck huh? and then settle for a breath or two. Yeah. Let the weight of the body passively open the joints of the shoulders. All right. And then releasing, you know, changing sides. Yeah, open the other shoulder. Yeah. One or both knees. Yeah. Sometimes I would use my hand to get a little bit more of that neck stretching. And linking hands if the readiness is there. Beautiful. All right, back to the center. All right, both sides level. You can reach the arms forward as you circle the legs around. Or you can cross them to support your head. Yeah. So when I do my self-practice, I'm not too strict about the alignment. I'm more on the internal sensations, the openness and the lightness of the joints, yeah, mobility, yeah, random movements, yeah. and of course the breath. Beautiful. All right. And just press up the knee. And from the kneeling position, um, just reset the lower back and the spine by doing yeah, a short round of the balasana. All right, not too long. Yeah. Yeah, just relax the abs. All right, body over the shoulders, curling the toes behind, and then just lifting to alternate down with facing dog. And if you notice, yeah, you can also angle that your foot a little bit wider, and then you can also extend that corresponding hand, the same arm, um, the same shoulder as your lifting leg. All right, up to you. Yeah, you can circle that hip around while it's up in the air, yeah, bending and stretching that leg a few times before you change. Huh? Uh, it feels open already. And then just marching here, shake the hands. Good. And settle down. Beautiful. And then breathe. All right. 
and I'm crossing both knees through so you can sit nice and relax on the ground. Okay, extending both legs. Yeah, and give those a nice flipping around. Yeah, circling. Good. Body forward. Yeah, and roll on your back. Yeah. And then one more thing. Yeah, I feel like the energy waves in coiling you know, concentric motion and it affects yeah, the practice in general. Like you don't want to be changing right away from one side to the next. And then here, if you notice, I'm doing um, a few elements yeah, within that cluster of techniques of hip opener. And then later on, I will be changing sides. Okay, you can cross the arms behind the head and then fanning your legs to side to side, breathing in as you lift. Exhale as you twist. And once it feels light, you can add the knee swing. It's fine. Yeah. Also one of my favorite transitions. And then you can kick the leg already. And this adds to the opening of the sacral lumbar here and behind the rib cage at the back. Good. And if the head falls, you can just open wide across. Beautiful. Okay. Crossing the legs, rocking up and down. You might want to take it easy first by rolling over one side or rock this up to the sitting. And then from here, you can just step back to downward dog, or I would yeah, normally press up yeah, and to the back. And then a mild chest stretch, just to loosen. Good, and a downward facing dog. All right, and just walking the legs, and a few side to side, lifting and stretching. Good. All right. Let me just tighten this strap. It's falling. Okay. Yeah. You may want to try and jump up the stand, yeah? Good. Or try the bakasana, the position of the crowd. Uh, let me try and jump up to standing. And if it's light, I will progress to the handstand. There we go. Uh, sometimes, it happens in one go. Yeah, it doesn't matter. If you fall, just do it again. Breathe. It's good to celebrate the strength of the body. The lightness as well. All right. Slowly down, 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 and set. All right. Give your legs some nice fanning and shaking. You know, recovering after the effort. Good. Yeah. Like closest to me bends. And then the other one hugs. Yeah. The sitting binding twist away from me. Yeah. And here you can move from hip to hip. And rub the shoulder around too. And then just a mild twist, you know, just to break the cycle from the pressing, from the handstanding, from the active ones. And if you're doing the Ibrahmatsandrasana, you can bind that hand against the foot. Too. Yeah. All right, binding, releasing, and then both legs open wide across. In a few side stretching here, breathing in, exhale as you stretch. Yeah. You can hold one side longer, yeah, just to rub the hip around. All right, Upavishta Konasana, legs apart position, and then folding in the middle. Yeah. You can drop the head to one side there, or traction the neck away from the collarbone. 
and then breathe. Beautiful. All right, pressing up. Yeah, collect one leg, and then just fanning to side to side. Okay, and then just throwing yourself away from uh, the camera, and then lie down on the tummy. So you can do the same sequence, this time it's the opposite side. All right, leg closest to me bends, and the other one extends, and let the head fall. Good. You can turn the thigh bone in and out of the joint. All right, and massage the knee by circling around. And the same as before. Um, our bodies are not perfectly symmetrical. You might be feeling this side is shorter than the other, or this might be your more open side. Try to reconnect to your inner sensations. This is my tighter side, actually, so... Yeah, I would normally yeah, stay here for a bit longer. Yeah. Hmm. Circling around. All right, shoulder opener. Open that arm to the back and chest stretch. Linking hands or no. Oh, we can let the head fall there and then open. Yeah. Probably your body is open. You can try and do this technique. And then you can rub your hips away from the rest of your upper back. All right. And change. You don't want to be pressing too much there. You just to open the shoulder. Move forward and back away from the socket. And linking. Beautiful. And back to the floor. Circling around. We can flip one side up and down. You can allow the legs to fall and then swimming those knees. Beautiful. All right. Hands and press. Come down kneeling as a transition. And then settle for a breath or two. All right. Show this over the hands, lifting, and then do the alternate leg lift again. Yeah. So if you notice, aside from the hand standing, uh, these are doable positions. And if you are still building on your hand standing there, you can just do what? Maybe a bakasana or a leg balance, and there are many choices. All right. You can just cross kneel. Yeah. Or I'll try to jump yeah, my hips through so I can sit forward to the front of the mat. All right. The first time I went up to a uh, handstand, but for this round, I'll jump through it. Yeah. Crouching, sitting, and <laughs> jump in. All right. And give that leg some nice flipping, yeah. circling around. All right. Good. Breathe this one. Okay. okay. And that leg, yeah, and roll to the back. Good. And up and down you go. And circles. And then side to side. Okay. Swinging and twisting. And up and down. All right. Leg closest to me. Yeah, bends under. And the other one crosses on top. And twisting away 
from the tip. Next stretching. Around crossing, yeah, both legs wide apart. <laughs> and let's repeat this flow side to side it. And another round of the Upavishta Konasana. Beautiful. All right, press it. And then gliding to a few side to side. Yeah, I feel like doing another one round of jumping up to stand. Yeah, so I'll try and do it again. And you can jog the dog there, lifting up and down, marching in place. Breathing in, so inhale as you sit and crouch, and at the top of the breath, that's where you jump to stand. Eh? Good. Push through it. All right, and then down the floor, and then sitting nice and easy. Yeah and flipping and twisting. All right, back to the floor. Yeah. Working, rocking up and down. And for this round, I'll deepen the stretch to the side body. Now we'll reach over that leg. And the other one. You can rub it a few times in a circular motion. Kicking and stretching. Moving up and down too. Good. And then changing the other one. Beautiful. Okay, up and down. And then sitting. You can just slide back to downward dog or do a press and back. And then curl upwards, easy back bend, and push it backwards. <laughs> alternate leg lift. So if you notice, every time I go back to downward dog, I'll do my alternate leg lift. It helps me decompress the hips. Good. And then breathe. And normally when I feel the body is open, I will do a few rounds of arm standing. You're alternating jumping and pressing. Yeah, let me do another one round of jump. Yeah. And then when you do your hand pressing, you need to release the old air out from that preparatory breath in. Because if you hold that breath too long inside, your body will feel heavy because that breath is already stale. All right, and then coming down, if you can't control it, all right, I'll try to sit through it, <laughs> and sitting on the floor. All right, it's good to realize I can still do things I used to enjoy many months ago. Yeah. Not as light, but yeah, still grateful that I still have the strength. Okay. All right. Good. One leg extension. The Kurunchasana. Yeah. But not distract. Yeah, I can just rub the you know, pointed bone of my buttock there so I can stretch backwards. Yeah, I'm at the stage of my practice that when you've accomplished yeah, 
the externality of the techniques. The next layer is internal, and that's where the external alignment are not as they're important, but you're going to be focusing more on the internal techniques. Yeah, because through the external techniques, you gain the safety, yeah, the physical uh, strength, yeah, the, uh, I say the, the foundational yeah, requirements. Now, but when the inner body is open, yeah, the external body yeah, becomes less involved. So you focus more on the sensations inside and the breath and the joints and those things. Good. And the Bharadvajasana. Yeah. Now I'm uh, starting to gain access to the deep um, lines of the hips and the shoulders. Yeah. All right, untangle. Yeah, free the other one. But you can lightly shake those legs up in the air. Yeah. Transitioning again. Yeah. Jumping backwards. Yeah. Inhaling as you press. Clip. And exhale behind you. Inhale, push away. And exhale to the back. All right, just easy marching here. Yeah. All right. I'll do one round of yeah, standing position. Maybe an easy trikonasana here. And then adding some shoulder opening, side stretching. And then down, and then changing the ankle. And then doing a side angle position. All right, and from there. Legs apart, and I'll try to press into a handstand. Really easy. When the legs are wide, the body is lighter, so you need to exercise more control in the pressing. Yeah, but the breath pattern is the same. He inhaling, and at the top you press up. Eh? All right, it's heavy. <laughs> I guess I waited too long. See how to find that perfect timing. There we go. And then you exhale, breathing in, breathing out. I'm not physically strong. I utilize my breath and the timing and the coordination. Yoga is like a dance. One element would have to complement and synchronize the other ones, at least on the asana part. All right, coming down <laughs> to the floor. And rotating again to the top of the mat, and then easy up and down and a few side to side. All right. Jumping through or just sitting through. All the way forward. Okay. Recovery. Yeah, fanning and twisting, circling around. Okay. Grunchasana, the other one. So this is why I realized that once the body transitions from an element to the next deeper one, when to go back to the previous, it's not as open and it's not light as before externally, but internally it's deeper and more open. Yeah, as the body goes deeper, as the, as the practice goes deeper into the inner compartments, when you come back to the externality, like for example, understanding, yeah, yeah, yes, you can still practice them, 
but you will gain them from the perspective of the internal dynamics and less muscular. Yeah, I think that's the natural transition. Okay, and just uh, crossing that um, foot against the lining of the opposite hip. Bharadvajasana. Good. And here you can fraction the neck. And then one more thing, the tongue gets more involved in the practice. You know, when the body is open internally. And breathe. All right. Binding, releasing, and a few of this to decompress. Yeah, if I feel like oh, I need more yeah, stretch for the lower spine, I will lie down on the back. Well, so breaking the cycle, breaking your flow, so you can create more space internally. And that's how I do it. Yeah. Although I have a structure in place, if I feel like I need to gain more internal openness, you know, I would do random transitions like this. Okay, I'm feeling light already. Yeah, pushing, pressing, backwards, easy up, easy down. All right. Standing the second side, like the trikonasana, easy, less track, yeah, more lightness and openness in space. All right, and then changing the other leg, but this time it's a side angle stretch. And you can allow the hip to fall and arch. Okay. And press. Yeah, now try narrow legs. Yeah, when the legs are narrow, it's not too light, neither too heavy, just enough. Inhaling, finding the timing, exhaling. There we go. Inhale as you push. Exhale to loosen the heaviness. Inhaling away from the floor. And even reposition the hip socket while you're up in the air. All right. Coming down with control <laughs> and sit on the ground. Good. Happy. All right. Good. Now transitioning to extensions already. Okay. Now do a padmasana sometimes. Yeah, I split. Yeah, or well, this one. Yeah. And I will just try and. Flip it on my tummy. All right. And I can extend now. Binding has a special place in my cell practice. I guess through binding, I'm able to gain access to the inner linings of the hips. Now, now one more thing. This is not the advanced you know, stage of the practice. So unless yeah, you've done this in the past and it's like for you don't do any the technique from this point on. Yeah. And also this is where yeah, the common alignment um, principles may not apply anymore because in here you're getting through the, those deep pockets you now where only the breath can pierce. And the alignment may not be as symmetrical yeah, anymore. All right, but feels good inside. All righty. 
backwards, yeah, and lying down, yeah, and this way now I uh, practice, um, yeah, the supine reclining stretching, yeah. So the floor is supporting me as I open the spine and the hips. Okay. I'll try to do yeah, the upward facing bow. And even here, I can still feel some heaviness clogging the shoulders, so walking the hips. Yeah, so you can uh, shake the heaviness out in the tongue and uh, I find waving the body feels good yeah so you can glide your spine through those commonly tight spots all right and settle for a breath or two All right, and then down to the floor, linger a moment, and all the way down to release. Okay, knees to chest, and circle around. All right, side stretching. I feel like the side stretching is a good, Count the stretch for back bending. Stretching the discs of the spine, but in a way that it's lateral. All right. Up and down motion. Okay. And then do the Padmasana at the leg. Reaching, maybe do one stretch to the side, and the other one. And maybe like a back bend in the Padmasana. You can even do the lion smile. All right. And up, and crossing. And to the back again, up and down, side stretching. And the other leg, the other shoulder. All right. Position of the upward bow. Personally, back bend has always been my weak part. Yeah, I am not an extension inherently yeah. but through practice yeah, and it took me many years for me to at least understand yeah, the principle of extending the spine backwards but until today it's not as easy Mm. All right. So yeah, we need as practitioners to develop first what's inherent of us. Yeah, I'm more of a forward bending person. Yeah, I'm given the natural gift of external physical strength, so I make use of that so I can gain access to the internal body. 
and once the internal system starts to open, and then yeah, you're progressing yeah, your practice, but you're using your inherent strength yeah, to support your exploration of the deeper ones. Yeah, and a few side stretching and kneeling. The camel pose. And rubbing the neck and shoulders. And an extension, like you want to free your spine of those body parts getting in the way for it to open. And that includes the lining of the shoulders and then even the knees would have to find its way down the center so you can use them to draw your spine away from yeah, yeah, the heaviness of the lower back and the hips. And it may mean pressing that knee and then circling around the origin of the thigh bone inside the head so you can move the spine away from the socket of that hip, yeah, deeper ones. All right. So you gain, and then you practice the technique from the origin. Yeah. And then going deeper, maybe here. Yes, yeah, so I can stretch now the neck. Also, the neck is part of the spine, so you may use the hand you know, to rub the neck away from the side while pressing into the knee. Right. And you can lightly dance and wave the side body, the shoulders away from the rest of the side trap. All right. I'll try another one of Shrasana, maybe progress this to something deeper. So I make sure I'm drawing from the inner hip up and not just bending at the knee. So the spine can fully open and then distribute the back bend evenly from the low back all the way to the neck region. All right, and rise up. Make sure you're able to come back with the same control as entering the position. And then come back middle, and you can wipe the side to side. Okay, let me flow once or twice. Right. Alternate the leg left. And then maybe kick that leg away from the joints with that yeah, blockages left from those previous techniques. All right. And I'll do a single leg back bend. It's like a preparation for the kapata, kaputasana, which will form part of my practice later on. And even here, you know, they have flexor inside. All right. We just don't do the pose for the, for the sake of doing it. Understanding the deep origins of the position in relation to the breath and the energy locks are important. All right. And that ensures safety of the practice. And as I've mentioned, our body parts are not perfectly symmetrical. Yeah. Sometimes we need to adapt to the limitations 
that so you can attain the balance and the openness without hurting our bodies. For example, this side of me is my tighter side, but it's the stronger side. All right. Coming up. <laughs> March in place. Walking. And even wave your side body. Good. And back to the middle. You know, rub the shoulders a few times. Swing up and down. All right. I'll try in a kapitasana. It might feel open. If not, I'll just place my hands behind towards the floor. All right. Wrap the armpits forward. Move the arm bones forward away from the upper back before you curl backwards. Uh, pressing down to your knees, drawing in from the core. You can also wave. So the upper back can open. And then let the arms externally rotate so the shoulder blades can hug under the spine. And even if you are able to see your toes already, don't rush. You may lightly place your fingertips there so you can rub yeah, the spine further away from the creases of the shoulders. And reach. Assess neck, shoulders, hips, knees, arms, and the breath inhaling. Arms externally, so the elbows are pointing to the back and to the floor, you place the elbows slightly down and breathe. Beautiful. All right, come up. Wow, Kapotasana has never been easy for me. Yeah. The challenge is always <laughs> really high every time I do it. Not even if I do <laughs> that technique almost daily, yeah, I still find it difficult. <laughs> Pressing and stretching. But it's one of the most, I say, physically beneficial asana for promoting internal strength. Yeah. Like your whole body, the entire body is working. And not just the body, but also the brain. <laughs> Since I've done one side, you have to do the other one. That's just the way it is. Yeah. But the way I approach this side, since this is my loose side, yeah, my left hip, yeah, since I'm facing you, it's my left hip. Yeah, from, from your angle, you see the right. My left hip is so open and loose. Therefore, I need to take care of this side even more. Yeah. Sometimes it feels like, but for today, it feels a bit like it tw it's twisting inside. So I'll just reconnect again. All right. Okay. Good. I might bend this knee. Yeah. So I can draw in. I'll have this platform yeah, to release this side. Hmm. 
And once I find that center of the gravity, I'll try and fall to the back and I'll stretch this leg. Because this part of my hip is so, lo so loose, I use more of the bending knee so I can find the center of that knee. Otherwise, it will slip away to the side. Mm, feels good, this one. Nice and deep, like you're able to lift the spine away from the socket of yeah, that hip. I feel so open. Like the breath just suddenly opens up. <laughs> You're breathing, but you barely feel the breath. It's like it's organic. It just goes inside the lungs. It's so brimming like your skin crawls. But in a, um, I say, beautiful way. Yeah? You feel alive. You feel amplified. You don't feel faint or lazy or nauseous. Feels happy. Kapatasana, hugging the knees in. Sometimes I will do this technique of gliding the tail back so I can move before the hips yeah, shift forward. And in the mouth and the tongue. Yeah. Don't pull the arm bones down, move forward so the neck and the spine can open upwards and then they wrap in front so the spine here yeah, have the space. Yeah. They move away from the upper back. And then you can wave. Alright, so I'll go up a bit so I can reposition but not that knee. All right. And then don't overstretch your arms. Let the spine fall. Your body is so open now. Let the process do it for you. And the breath, open it up for you. Breathe. You can rub the shoulder there. And down. And breathe. And in here, there's no pressure in the low back. Actually, no pressure in the low back. The low back feels neutrally open. The spine is really open. Although I can still feel something there in the shoulders. Yeah. So reset and come back. All right. And up. Senses alive. And then just match it up in place. A few circles up and down. All right, so let me break the cycle. Let me float this one. All right. And if you notice as well, my breathing pattern has changed. I'm involving my mouth more. Plavini Pranayama. Alternate leg lift. That's a way of releasing remaining blockages in the hips and the shoulders and relax the spine. Okay. Ekapada. Kaputasana. 
It's interesting. I find this actually easier than the Kaputasana. All right, I'm gonna do that so I can move deeper now into that hip region. Then I will just let go, like surrendering. And sometimes I will, yeah, wave the arms around, like seemingly searching for uh, the linings. All right, and once there, I will try to refine my technique by lightly pressing and adjusting the knee and the shoulder. And to the floor. Nice and deep, this one. And every time I do back bend, I feel new pockets open inside. For example, now I can feel yeah, that my this knee is paving way for the opening of the space of my toes. And it feels good. All right, come up. Pressing, pressing. And, and maybe lift that knee and place it back down. And then I will just try to relax here. Good. Nice and deep. I can feel Hekapada Kapadasana for me. Like I can feel the origin of that nadi all the way yeah, to the space between you know, the big toe and the second toe. Right up here, all the way to the root. And that extends all the way to yeah, the cranial cavity. I don't know what you call that nerve extending, but there is one <laughs> stretching all the way back. And that's how I also feel it during Samadhi, like the space between the big toe and the second one. That's where you yeah, had the cold or the cool sensation of the energy, yeah, pierces and passes through. And to the back. <laughs> I'm not a theoretical person. I can just describe <laughs> the sensations to you. <sighs> Maybe you know yeah, the theory behind it. But, and then when I, my understanding and my knowledge of the theory happen accidentally, most of them from experience, I will experience them and I won't, I won't even seek you know, for the information and they will just appear and happen. So when I come across the theories, yeah, they become like very experiential yeah, and I can understand them from yeah, a more meaningful and real life sense. Yep, like your arm bones go like that, like a hook, so the spine can fall backwards. Good, feels good this one. So I really take my time. Yeah. Even if I can do it in one go, I want to trace you know, where it's coming from, uh, the linings of the shoulders and even the elbows. And then only through that, we understand you know, the essence of the techniques we practice. Mm. 
I'm gonna let me press for this round. Adjusting the knees to the middle. All right. Ooh, when the knees are hugging to the middle, yeah, the back bend gets even deeper. Wave them and rubbing around. Good, flowing. Also, this practice, especially of the asana, once you decide to go past and explore the deeper ones, your body would have to sustain it. You have to face it, not just the asana, also the meditation. Yeah, there's this, this a point in this practice that there's no going back. Yeah, and that's just my nature. Yeah, as a teacher, yeah, for me to guide my students safely, I make sure I wanted to really understand the essence, the asana, yeah, may seem shallow, but that's where the deeper realizations come from. All right, let me do this one. Pardon the noise. There are like construction going around the house. I think they're cutting trees or something. Hugging the midline. Open, feeling open, and down the floor. You can release those elbows so you can reset the shoulders and also move the neck around so there's no pressing into your inner joints. All right. Try to press to the hands. So I can reorganize the hips and the knees. And the shoulders and the neck. Nice and deep. Wow. <laughs> the nadis. Ekapada kaputasana, kaputasana. They are like the three big asanas for gaining access to Ida Pingala and the Shishimna. Covered asana, last round. So after one symmetrical, you do asymmetrical and back to symmetrical. Have I done already? This is the fourth, right? Probably this is the last. This is the most open I feel. I think it's enough.
Beautiful. All right. I won't be pressing anymore. I feel that nice and deep internally. Just rowing around. Beautiful. Maybe a few side stretching here. All right, just a level. Alternate like left. Next stage, deep hip openness. Again, none of these succeeding ones should be done without preparation, without guidance. This is my variation of the Mula Bandhasana. Or the Vadrasana or the Goraks Shasana. Paving way for the stimulation of the Kandanadi. Simhasa. The Simhasana, it has a direct connection yeah, to the Mula Bandha and the Mula Dara Chakra, the pelvic floor, yeah, as opposed to yeah, the common uh, concept like the Bandhas as uh, hugging. Yeah, yes, they're hugging or squeezing, but the Mula. Um, uh, banda, the pelvic floor would have to relax, so you can yeah, utilize the openness through the breath yeah, to draw the energy up. Yeah, because bandas, the yeah, first, they collect the energy from the sides, the peripheries, the midline, but um, the function of drawing the energy up. They would have to open and relax. Yeah, bandas are like valves. Yeah, you can yeah, choose to tighten, like the tap, tighten, constrict, or open. Yeah, so you can collect the force, and then you're lifting up through the shishumna nadi. And the badrasana is one way for us yeah. to open either side and. Leading to the opening of the Shumna Nadi. Yeah. So after our, the back bend, after opening the disc of the spine, next would, you have to open yeah, the linings, yeah, the triangular shape. Yeah. So you can now collect the energy to the middle and then left upright. Yeah, so for me, this one is more of uh, a mudra and not just an asana. Mudras are uh, uh, techniques for channeling the energy to the midline. Okay, that's why I keep doing this. I guess I wanted to draw the sensation yeah, from the inner linings of the hips. And then for safety too, you don't want to be just rotating and then your weight pours down to those sensitive joints, otherwise you might suffer from misalignment. 
and that's <laughs> the last thing you want to happen. That's why it's internal awareness, really. This is now where yeah, the external alignment is not as important. Because you want to draw yeah, the technique from the internal functions, internal sensations, and we call that guyasanas, yeah, kriyavatis. Yeah. They're like asana, but they're more than that because you are using the energetic anatomy yeah, to assist the external body. And then the tongue, the mouth, they are too involved in this process. And the fingers, the knuckles, the toes. All right. The frog. And a few of this to decompress. Beautiful. Flipping up and pushing back. All right, alternate dog. Okay. Next, I think I need to finish this quickly, so I'll just do one round. Just to open the shoulders, the hips. The reclining, yeah, Baddha Padmasana. It's a deep back bend. It's a deep hip opener. Oh, my microphone is getting in the way, so I'll just angle. I don't want to be breaking my device. All right, that's it. And breathe. Yeah, for me, this one opens more of the upper part of the chest. Isolation of the thoracic back bend. Beautiful. Right, and crossing those legs, freeing those arms. All right. Thought it's broken. And then just circle around. And kicking. And stretching sideways. Rubbing the tip around the socket. Up and down. Shaking that leg up. Oh, it's noisy outside. Probably I won't be posting this one. It's annoying noise. But I'll, I'll just keep bubbling in a way. Okay. And around of Sutta Kandasana. It has a similar effect to the Badrasana, but deeper this one actually. Oh, nice and deep here. All right, up and down. And then sitting. 
Crossing, the reclining, Badakonasana again. There are many ways of doing this. And again, this is a personal process I do for myself practice. Because it suits me, this how I release yeah, those deep blockages clogging that side of me. The body may not be symmetrically aligned, but internally it feels open and free. And here I can feel this side of me, that the pingala on the right side. Piercing the neck up to the brain. All right, freeing this arm and leg. Circling around the joints. Good. And let's have another round of this. And change. All right. I'll do one round alasana. Then we parita karani. in the shoulder region. And slowly flowing down. Oh, that's a deflection. Whoo. And around. You can feel the money for a chakra there releasing the energy from the hips to the chest. All right. Just a couple more. Bada Padmasana, Kandasana combination. Sometimes I will you shift over one side. Before I fold in the middle. But even it's not perfectly middle. Stretching the side, drawing that leg in, back to the middle, and lifting the side trunk away from the crease of the hips. All right. 
kann das nach. For me, Gandasana is a powerful technique uh, for collecting the energy into the midline, <clears throat> opening the lingam, the kandanadi, yeah, resting right at the core, in the center of yeah, the hips, where uh, it pierces three important chakras of the astral anatomy. Muladhara at the base, Swadishtana in the middle, and the first yeah, point, yeah, touching the Manipur chakra. Okay. Okay. Untangle and crossing. Leveling the hips yeah. and releasing that hip, counter stretching the side of the body, moving around that hip in circular motion. Okay. This frees the joints. Oh, it feels good, this one. All right. Viparita Karani Mudra. Alasana. Beautiful. All right. And just releasing. And rubbing. Making the inner body light. Oh. <laughs> right now, my inner body is so just hollow inside. Like my organs are not there. Just two more. Lengthen the side. I don't want to be pressing against the bone of my ribs. Make sure it's resting against the fleshy part of the lower abdomen. this ok 
Okay. Last Gandasana. Looks like when you do Kandasana, the origin of the position are the ankles and the feet. Yes, they play a huge role, but it's really the hips inside. Like the thigh bones rotate from the hip socket. So you can gain access to the lines of the sacrolumbar region. And of course, yeah, should open as well the other pathways there so you're not compressing. Yeah, so you feel open and light. Normally I do um, Kachari Mudra. So I can draw because the mouth and yeah, the tongue can draw yeah, the energies from the lower regions. Okay. Almost finished. Right. And then just a final recovery for the hips, the side body. Most of these are just random, uh, shaking, flipping, circling, to release remaining blockages, clogging those inner linings. All right, well done. Happy. And back to the swinging hip. And that's, those deeper ones are actually the inspiration for this flow. Yeah. We do in the beginning of the session. So you attain the same benefit without being too complicated. Yeah, and that's the beauty of really trying to gain access to the origin yeah, of the deeper ones, because through that, as a teacher, I'm able to pass the learnings to my students in a more general sense. All right. Breathing through it. Okay. And to the back. Alternate the leg lift. Try to jump up the stand for the finish of this practice. Well, the body is so open, <laughs> actually too light and too loose. This is my way of resetting my muscular energy. All right, that's enough. All right. Sweet. It's too noisy outside. I'll end the session now. Yeah. If you've finished this far, thank you. Yeah, maybe practicing with me and listening. 
Inhale. And exhale. Breathing in, open, spreading, lifting, swaying. And down. Yeah. And seal to the heart, they fall, the head bows to the heart. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Namaste. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.